Hey, this is Samara, signing on with some more of Gone Home. Okay, so last time we began one of the seminal walking sims, and we're going, or er, you know, playing as Katie, going through her, well, not even old house, family's new house. Anyways, so yeah, trying to figure out what happened to our sister Sam and why everyone's gone. So, bleh. So, yeah, we're going through, we're finding secret passages, or hidden panels and everything, and actually re-looking at this now that I'm focusing, you know, Sam and her girlfriend Lonnie are using a Ouija board to communicate with Oscar, who was who we inherited the house from. So, you know, that's something. And, you know, I say communicating, but, you know, it's a Ouija board, it's bull. It's BS. Anyways. So I'm continuing to look around. We found quite a lot, and you know, I gave away the game pretty early. Okay, just looking around. I feel like I'm missing a lot. There's gotta be like more keys, right? I feel like that's what I'm missing right now is keys, and I don't know where else to look. My own dad's room? Just turn the light on, yeah. So, yeah, we're just learning about, you know, the family as we go. Actually, I think I remember now reading that there's a trophy for leaving all the faucets on. That's actually probably gonna really bug me, because I'm gonna get scared by the running water. Family photo. Whoops. No. Oh, Jan. Okay. Oh. Oh, I just took her bookmark out of her book. Walt Whitman, Leaves of Grass. Okay. Yeah, that running water noise is gonna bug me. Yeah, there's gotta be another key I'm missing. I feel like I'm missing a lot, and I know there's a couple of doors. I know how to get to the end of the game. Jesus, that lightning. You know, there's a point made that you... Oh yeah, we got the combination with the safe. Well, let's check that out. You know, there's a point... Um, T-shirt Fletcher, shop. Hmm, okay. Read bro the Brother Fit 150. Okay. Okay, yeah, anyways. I was saying something else and I completely lost track of what I was going for. Anyways, um... Right, what was the combination again? Uh, zero, five, one, left three times, stop, turn left. Wait, so this is just, whoops. Well, we don't have to, zero, five, zero, one. There we go. Whoop. Open up fully. Morley filter cigarettes, cool. Lonnie, 1994, so that's the girl. And, yeah, red hair, as we've seen from the die. Basement key. Lonnie came over today. But everything was... different. Yep. <laughs> she was sitting her and Dad have something in common. She wouldn't look at me. Finally, I asked her what was going on. She said she felt like she'd done something wrong that night in the city. Like I must think... But I said no. There was nothing wrong. I just wanted to say... But I couldn't find the words. It felt like I was gonna cry, but I wasn't sad. Other way. She got up and sat next to me on the bed. I looked at her. Lonnie. Do you think you could ever... And that's when she kissed me. 
Yeah, this is when my dense head <laughs> figured out for the first time. But again, I already knew because of podcasts I had listened to. But you know, things are starting to develop. I swear there was creepier dialogue options um, earlier on. Maybe I messed up. But okay, basement. I also felt like, like the lighting worked a lot worse. Uh, dear Sam, I would like to cordially thank you for... Okay. Chip bag. Alright. So, yeah, I could have sworn there was, like, creepier dialogue options. I feel like I'm missing something. Hey! You know, again, Sam's a good artist. It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else is around... Well, you know. So you could say we're dating. But it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the real difference. Now when we get off the phone, or go home for the night, oh. where it's just quiet and we're alone, we say I love you. Sorry, looking at this. And yeah, so same assignment that we saw Sam got, but you know, she was very uninterested, and meanwhile we are Kate's an expert. Sounded wrong. Never mind. Yeah, a bunch of Katie stuff. You know, she seems to be very impressive. Yeah, and the same, you know, plaque that we found before. Or, you know, similar to one the one Sam made. And, yeah, lots of Katie stuff, and, you know, she was way more into being, you know, smart. I guess you can try to put this nicer to Sam, not to discourage her. Okay. Yeah, now you got that growl the boiler, making everything's creepier. Again, I swear, again, probably also knowing the twist, and... Alright. Yeah, knowing the twist already... Why is this plugged in when it's knocked over? Richard... Oh. Okay. Just looking at stuff. Okay. Yeah, again, maybe I messed up. Joyce, complete understanding. Alright. Books. Everything's labeled books. Uh. Oh, and she got in. Okay, so we're. Hmm. I'm so stupid sometimes. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program thing, oh. and I was all making plans like, you should come visit me, stay in my dorm room. But she said, Sam, I ship out on June 6th. I was like, ship out? To where? She said, to basic training. What did you think I was doing all that ROTC stuff for? I guess she's been planning to join the army right after high school since she was like, 12. And I guess she's really going to do it. So I was like, after graduation, I'm just never going to see you again? She said, let's just have fun while we can. Right, so yeah, she's leaving for the military. Yeah, and this is just, I was confused by the naming. I go, I thought that was Terrence. No, Richard. So our grandfather on her dad's side and he was also a writer and was very impressed with the first book but you know seems like it just got worse hold on a second I don't remember what's in that room continuing look yeah maybe I'm just misremembering because <laughs> I thought there was like way creepier things you know, more like hints at occult stuff and other creepy things that kind of made you think that Sam was like planning to sacrifice Lonnie. But maybe I'm completely misremembered. <laughs> okay. They tell you to stick with the group on field trips, Katie. There's a reason for that. Lonnie and I snuck off on the side paths at Multnomah Falls and got a little lost. Okay, a lot lost. Like, for hours. Right before the bus left, we found a trail, 
and came running down the path, soaked and covered in mud, shouting for the bus not to leave. The school called home. It's like a two ahead of myself. Dad said, you didn't get into trouble like this before you met that Lonnie girl. But I don't think they know, no, about us. The kids at school, though, I'm really afraid that's a whole other story. Stick with the group, Katie. Stick with the group. Yeah, so now we're starting to hear the concerns where Katie, or Sam, is now starting to fight instincts. Uh, Girl Scout set list. Okay. More music that they're gonna Todd's listen to. Todd's band lost their singer. Flick Bell. Todd said he sucked. Lonnie said he got sick of Todd's shit. And he was complaining about needing a new singer. So Lonnie was like, I can sing. And they were all kind of like, you can? And she was like, probably. But she's been rehearsing with them for like a week now. And I finally got to see them play in Todd's basement today. And she's actually really amazing. So proud when she's on stage. It's incredible being in awe of someone you love. So everybody knows it's like a temporary situation till she ships out in June. But till then, I'm gonna be at every single show. Yeah, so then Lonnie found a calling in bands. I can sing. Um, what the heck? Okay. Okay. Trying to remember stuff as we go here. Uh, ooh, tape. Girl Scout. Self. So probably another... Hold on. So, yeah. There's also... Grab button. Stray specs. Read letter. Desato. Alright. So happy you like the drawing I was thinking of you. Yeah, etc. etc. <laughs> Sorry, not trying to like speed through things, just we're going at a pace. Oh. Alright. Nothing. Hey, not under here. Wait. Okay, not reading any more of that. Yeah, okay. I thought he stopped a bit faster than that. Yeah, that's them spending the night together, let's just say. And yeah, you just like immediately drop it. And it's not a graphic or anything, it's just sort of like, no, I don't need to know that much about her love life. Which is fair. So, you know, you can find that and it's so hidden. I remember just like finding that and just like, oh, that's, you know, just funny on delivery. And I've watched Let's Plays, just like seeing the reactions, and not many people find it. Like, I remember Jacksepticeye was one of the first, like, high-profile Let's Plays this game had. And, um, I eventually watched that after I played it myself. And I was so hoping he'd find that no, because I wanted to see his reaction, but he never did. Okay, there was a hidden passage in our room, but I think we can only open it from the inside. But, okay. It's coming together. There's another area, though. Uh, brat mobile, costume skeletons, the devil, cheerleaders, smell of. <laughs> Fair enough. Haven't heard of a peripheral. It's a line of mom and dad's situation, but it was so worth it. The girls on stage and just so loud and real and awesome. Okay. So just Sam continuing to swoon. Hey! Oh, I, just, I actually thought this was like a uh, super girl comic or something, but close enough. It kind of definitely has like her color scheme. Anyways. It happens to Betsy, another one. Uh. That is surprisingly loud. Uh. 
Oh, were they recreating it or something? They did it a lot. Or is this... Hmm. Kicking against the patriarchy. <laughs> Had enough, heard enough. They're getting it. Okay. Another bag of chips. You guys gotta finish these. Girl Justice Now. Girl... Okay, I did read that right. I see what they're going for. It's the time and effort to put in the writing in your letter. It showed an initiative and well-written, but it does not change my mind on this matter. Okay. So, yeah. Principal ratting us out. I don't get Lana's Well, not us, about. her. Like her band and our Z. Oh, here we go. Hair and everything are all anti authority. But I watch her in JROTC, and she's doing drills in perfect formation. I swear I saw somebody Following like duck down no over question. there. And there's all this stuff in the news about don't ask, don't tell. Like, she's going to join the army and then have to lie about who she is. She said they don't need to know what they don't need to know. Like, it was no big deal. This from the girl who trashed her locker to, like, defend my honor. I've learned when to stop arguing, though. I don't think Lonnie even gets Lonnie sometimes. Right, because they're both in denial about what they feel. And, you know, that's palpable throughout. Also, there was just something I noticed again. And again, the, you know, I keep turning around. You keep hearing those noises. The ambience and just, like, the looks and positionings of th some things. There is no monster in this house. There is nothing scary unless you're a homophobe. That's the only terrifying thing. And, you know, that's pretty ridiculous. There is nothing scary in this house. But, like, the execution of the atmosphere is so well done... You know, you could be forgiven for quaking in your boots trying to just navigate. Uh, Salon, Josephine. Okay. Oh, well, spent a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, fair care is expensive. Uh, I had a personal stuff. Okay, so promotion for mom. And Espanol. And. Wait. And Espanol? Is that like a. Uh, what do you want to call it? Um, language guide? Whatever. Um, Alright. Hey, Lonnie, sorry my mom was such a bitch last night. And then. Okay, so they met and it didn't go so well. Psycho Christian and her husband and and her new husband what? Don. Wait. Huh. Okay, I missed this. Oh, wait, I misread that. It's Lonnie is talking in red. For some reason, I knew that and then got confused. It's just like, oh, so she... Yeah, I got really confused there. I go like, wait, so did they... You know, did the Christian parents get divorced? No, I just misinterpreted that. But okay. Mmm, yeah, that's not good. Katie... You know how mom and dad are. Not exactly super open-minded about things. It feels like every minute I don't spend with Lonnie, I spend worrying about them finding out about us. And what would happen if they did? You know dad's joke about the nunnery that he'd tell whenever he brought boys around the old house? I wonder where he'd want to send me. Hmm. Probably to something very horrible, as we know. So, yeah, it just... 
it gets worse from here. <clears throat> it's like three bucks. Treasured always. Wait. Oh, that was from Lonnie. Okay. Which, that must be the thing that's, you know, the ornament that's out there. Which was really out of place compared to everything else. And I wonder why that was allowed to be on display as opposed to everything else. Maybe just Sam put it out when everyone was gone. Which, also, maybe I've missed it. Why are Mom and Dad gone? <clears throat> Do they have to, like, go to a thing for the promotion? I got two tickets to EWF on Thursday. Oh, okay. Okay, so friend from work hooked her up with something. <clears throat> right, should turn on more lights. I swear there was also one light that like pops like at some point when you're walking through. Saturday this afternoon, Mother and I are putting this in writing so you are absolutely clear. Privilege it because he spelt it wrong. And from using your car for anything except going to and from school. Yeah, so it just got I worse. Had an interesting talk with mom and dad tonight. One you were never gonna need to have. I mean, you've known, right? I've known. I've known since like Shira. <laughs> mom and dad didn't, I guess. But they saw the zine and the stuff on the locker, and they were like, "Is there something we should know about you and Lonnie?" And so here's the thing. I was prepared for them to be mad, or disappointed, or start crying, or something. But they were just in denial. You're too young to know what you want. You and Lonnie are just good friends. You just haven't met the right boy. It's a phase. That's what I didn't see coming. That they wouldn't even respect me enough to believe me. Well, joke's on them. Because they're in for one very long phase. And to be fair, yeah, she totally seems like somebody who would like she rot especially the new Netflix one. Anyways, um, sorry, yeah, so it just got worse and worse. Uh, regional director. Okay, yeah, and just like the despair, or you know, the difference between, you know, Katie enjoying her life, while Sam is just, you know, punished and punished more for trying to. Also, this is kind of a detail, you know. I'm guessing that's the wife, you know, took that out of the garbage and go like, you can keep, you can do this. Which is kind of sweet. So, you know, it's, you know, weird. Because the parents seem to have a good relationship, but yeah, it just, they continue to start burning the bridge more and more with Sam. Next, I'll save your... Is this like something? Hmm. Is he trying to like make a graphic novel, or is it just like a very stylized? Yeah, who knows? He's working on a lot of books. I might have gotten things out of order, but okay. So, continuing to navigate, we're almost there. Again, I know how to get to the end of the game. Uh, you in? Was this another, maybe back from childhood? Daniel finally came over to get his game. There it is. Okay. I've been dreading it. But he brought this story with him that I wrote when we were little. I 
started reading it. And then there I was, crying at the kitchen table. He asked what was wrong, and I was thinking about how we used to be friends, how much I'd taken for granted. But instead, I told him about school, and Dad, and Lonnie. And then how sorry I was that I wasn't his friend anymore. He gave me a hug and said it was going to be okay. But for some reason, I almost believed him. At least she had somebody supportive at the time. Okay, so mom got the job. Anniversary trip. What day is it? Maybe that's why they're gone? They went to their anniversary trip? June. That was in May. Yeah, this must be when they were gone. So that's why they were gone. Rick's wedding. That's one of the people. <laughs> well, Sam escaped when she could go when so she could avoid the dentist. Okay, yeah, then we just showed up early. Okay, so that's why. Just double checking. Again, there's a lot of stuff I apparently missed. I really didn't soak in the game as much as I am this time around. And I saw there was stuff on the fridge. I'll get to it. Whoops. There's a pantry with stuff in it. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's see. Sam schedule working at Crown Burger. Okay. Whoops. And that's the wedding invitation. Okay. <clears throat> it's coming together here. We're almost done. Uh, first, let me. S Sorry, I'm just... Okay, so... Yeah, sorry, that looks so weird. But, so yeah, some company found the books and they're totally into it, so they want to do a reprint. So that's something. So things are going up and down for dad. <laughs> and then is that? Yeah, okay. Both books. That's why this one looks so stylized. That's interesting, actually. Yeah, again, they actually do flesh out, you know, the parents quite a bit, too. You know, he has a whole arc about, like, continuing to try. Um, your mother and I will be away for a long weekend celebrating our anniversary. We'll be camping in the gorge, but we'll give you a call on the way home. Sorry, the kitchen is still... Be okay. So they just took off and weren't very, like... You know, didn't really inform her ahead of time, which... Oops. Oops. Sam, crown burger. Oh. She threw away her uniform. Parents are leaving town, so we'll have to have the run of the whole house until you leave. <laughs> um, okay, Lonnie, chill out. <laughs> so yeah, they're just gonna go for it. A little recycling bin. 
Can we clean up all the recycling in the house? Is there a trophy for that? Okay, but yeah, it's coming together. Piecing things up. A little cardboard to do maintenance. Yeah, my dad does that too. Okay, yeah. It's oddly, this is such a human house. I really am starting to appreciate way more how detailed this entire place is. And this is why, like, Gone Home is considered one of the great walking sims. Because they really flesh things out. Even, like, unimportant stuff or... Things you probably don't care about, like the parents, except that they're... Ooh. Uh, booted out. Lonnie okay. had her going away show with her band tonight. That's actually a... She's so incredible on stage. When she was singing, I could practically forget everything. That we only had 48 hours left. I don't know what comes next. And I can't live without her. Then she dedicated the last song to me. I couldn't take it. I was out on the curb in the alley, sobbing till my ribs hurt. I would follow her anywhere, Katie. But I can't. Where she's going. After a long time, she found me. She said she was sorry. She said, I wish things could be different. I just wanted to make you happy. I said, I don't think you can anymore. Okay, sorry, just reading stuff. Did we, wait, hold on. Gotta scroll all the way down. Uh. Dear oh, Katie, whoops. so much has changed. Even whoops. just since I didn't mean to replay that one. I thought I maybe missed one house. when I picked up with that other that school. other page, but maybe I was wrong. And my big sister being gone for a year doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't feel real, but I'm not gonna let it phase me. I used to tell you everything, and if I can't do it in person, mm. because you're off gallivanting around who knows where, I'll tell it to this journal. Oh. Just like I was talking to you. So it was not only their anniversary, it was also just like a retreat for them to get help. Oh, that's actually kind of tragic. The accidental human. Oh, so his new thing. Okay. Okay, so I guess, you know, he had another success with the reprint, so we want to continue the series. Jazz. Okay. Cover copy. It's been almost 20 years. Twice he saved a president's life. He's practically forgotten the days of the future of danger and excitement. Okay. Let me guess, the twist is that he was the president all along. <laughs> Okay, just different writing spots all over the house. <clears throat> Where we'll do it. Under the stairs. Final preparations are complete. Okay. So we I think that's the last, last... night together would be our happiest ever. And we'd forget tomorrow was going to come at all. It worked for a while. We had a good time seeing Oscar off. Then ran up to the attic to look through our photos. To find one for Lonnie to take with her. And looking at them... I realized they were all in the past, and there wouldn't be any more. I didn't know what I was going to do, and I cried, and she held me. She said she knew it was hard, but life would move on. I said I didn't want my life to keep moving without her. That's when she cried too. I was so exhausted. I must have fallen asleep like that in her arms. Oh, here's the thing. In the morning, I woke up Shh. and I was finally alone. Okay. 
Jesus. Sorry. It's still a creepy atmosphere. But yeah, everything's just falling apart more and more, and there's apparently... I swear, I'm missing a lot. What is going on? What am I missing? <laughs> I feel like I've missed a lot of stuff. I thought I was being thorough, but maybe I overlooked something. Maybe I, like, didn't look behind shelves enough or something. Because I could have sworn... I, again, I could have sworn there were a lot more audio logs that were a lot creepier and foreboding, especially early on. Did I miss something? Again, it really... Maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe I'm missing something. Oh. Hauntings and Poltergeist. Yeah. So I missed a couple of things. But I swear there was, like, a lot more stuff. Oh, hey. Coliseum. Okay, yeah, that's when they went to go see Pulp Fiction that we heard about earlier. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm missing, like, a bunch of different audio logs. Because I could have sworn... So many buttons. Can we put the buttons on our backpack? Is that a thing we can do? No, yeah, I must be missing a couple of audio logs. Or, you know, no notes... So sure. Okay. <clears throat> I must be missing a bunch, because I swear there were more. Again, I swear there were ones earlier on that got a lot creepier, and then they get more lighthearted and, like, sweet, and you're just like, oh, that's what's going on instead. Maybe I'm misremembering, because I just kind of remember, like, you know, I associate this game kind of like a very well-done horror atmosphere, for even though it's not a horror game, and maybe I'm mis mis <clears throat> misremembering? Pick up one of my trophies. I like the reading on that. Sorry, now that I take a look at those. Okay, yeah, so under the stairs, we know, open panel. So there's another hidden door here. Well, what do we find in here? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and I remember finding this, like, right at the end. You know, you're getting this sweet story, and then suddenly it's just like, oh my god. It's just... And imagine if you found, like, this... You know, this is like the most secret area in the house. Imagine if you find this early on and still don't know the twist. And boy, that would be just like, oh my god. Again, it's stuff like this set up and lying around that makes you think that maybe they're up to something. Like maybe this is going to be a horror game where it's just going to turn out that our Sam is a Satanist who's going to sacrifice this girl she met at school. No, but they're doing stuff. So, yeah, it's just like, okay, that's fun to find. And they're, you know, just... <sighs> and I find this funny now that I think about it, like, oh my god, you know, Satan, satanic imagery, a ritual circle, Ouija board somewhere else, and sugary snacks to keep your energy going for those long night prayer... <laughs> or long night rich dark rituals. Okay, out of key. The sunset light in this house is the saddest thing I've ever seen. I just want to sleep. When I'm in the attic, it almost feels like Lonnie could still be here. She's just downstairs. I'm just waiting to hear her pull down the hatch and come running up. Maybe I'll go up to the attic. And wait. Yeah. So now we can open up the attic. I swear I'm missing a bunch. I could be wrong, maybe I missed something. I'll have to go over and look, but the point is clear. You know, we've done, like, you know, the majority of the storytelling, so might as well finish this up. No, it's this way. All the doors open, a handful of lights on. And into the attic we go. I wonder if there was happened to be something in there. <clears throat> Bright. Okay. Oh my god. Katie. I, I fell asleep in the attic. In Lonnie and my old spot. And I missed the first two calls. 
I just barely caught the third one before the machine got it. And it was Lonnie. On a payphone. She'd been on the bus to basic, and she said she couldn't... She couldn't think of anything but me, and us, and that she couldn't go through with it. With the army and being a part, and all of it. And so she got off the bus in Salem. She said, Sam, I want you to pack up everything you can, and get in your car, and come find me. And let's just drive. Until we find somewhere. For us. And she asked me if I could do that. And I said yes. Right. Yes. And so that also explains, I kind of want to go down there to go, like, go to the answering machine again to play those, but the hopeful music is picking up. So, yeah, that explains, like, the original calls before we got here. It was the end of their story. And then, yeah, the developing vials and everything, however this stuff works. What is... Oh, that's the army uniform. And them! And then... Letters to Katie. This is the journal we've been hearing throughout... Do not read if you're Katie, not Katie. I'm so sorry. That I can't be there to see you in person. That I can't tell you all this myself. But I hope as you read this journal, and you think back, that you'll understand why I had to do what I did. And that you won't be sad. And you won't hate me. And you'll just know that I am where I need to be. I love you so much, Katie. I'll see you again. Someday. Love, Sam. Yeah, and there you have it. You know, right at the end there, it's... You know, it's Kate finding all this stuff and discovering for herself. And then finding the journal at the end that explains everything she's found. And that's kind of interesting. And to be fair, might have made her scared too, finding like the you know all the occult stuff and go like, oh my god. And then finding the journal and explains like, oh good, they're no one got sacrificed, but they're just gone. Oh, two Sarahs voicing. Okay. I should look at the cast and see if they've done anything else because the voice acting is actually really good in this. <clears throat> Hold on. So, yeah, that was Gone Home. How was it? It's actually better than I remember it. Featuring the music of... Are those real bands? They must be. <laughs> yeah, and a pretty small team working on this, but let's see. Yeah, only Sarah... Then who voiced Lonnie in that initial... Initial... I'm just looking through... I'm looking through the cast of going... Okay, so Sarah Grayson, who voiced Sam. She's a character in Tacoma, which is another Fulbright game. And Sarah Elmella? Elmella as Katie. I didn't say all that much. But who voiced Lonnie? Or was it just, you know, cats? Okay. Sport and encouragement. Something... That these people had, but not it's not Sam though with her family. Oh no, um, uh, Elmella, um, Kate's voice actress actually has done a lot. Um, grunts in Miles Morales. She's in Glitch Tax After Party as Apollyon. Oh, she was Lizzie Carmine in Gears Five. Lizzie did not get enough. Oh, and she was in Pyre. She was in. Oh, she was the female raider. Oh my God, this girl's got a lot of stuff under her belt. It's actually pretty cool. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> so yeah, that was Gone Home. This is, you know, one of the most famous walking sims, and I can see it, you know? I definitely noticed a lot more little details than I did my first playthrough, and I already knew the twist about Sam being a lesbian and everything, and like, what that actually meant. You know, conservative home, and ow, damn it. Smash my knuckle. Okay. 
growing up in a conservative home and not having this family support. That was kind of like the big thing talked about, you know, in podcasts from co-optional, gymquisition, a couple of other things, you know, that's kind of like the big, you know, big thing. And I suppose also during like the early 2010s, you know, there wasn't that much in the way of nothing big in the way of, you know, LGBT, sorry, LGBTQ plus, et cetera, et cetera, representation at the time. And, you know, it was reason, it was the, for those reasons that Gone Home got some flack from the gamer great, sorry, Jesus Christ, I can't speak, the Gamergate crowd, which I look back on, God, that was such a stupid goddamn, I mean, that's always been obvious, but God, when you really dig down, it was such a stupid controversy, anyways, but anyways, but yeah, but Gone Home was like, you know, not the first walking sim, but the one that definitely gained the most popularity and notoriety. So if anyone wants to disparage the walking sim, this is the example they give, mainly because you just walk around, you don't do anything, you know, there isn't much gameplay except for walking, which is so boring, am I right? And it's about, you know, gay girls? What's so interesting about that? But there's way more to it than just that. There's a lot of storytelling about, like, the family and, you know, the family itself in this game. You know, to be fair, the parents aren't completely, like, one-dimensional conservative, you know, um, bigots. They do have a little bit more going for them where they have, you know, their own wants, their own interests. And, you know, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the dad being, like, a... J or JFK theorist, but, you know, he tries to write his own books, and ha you see how he has his ups, has his downs. The mom seems to be, you know, pretty consistent. Yeah, also not supportive, but, you know, there's just more to them. They're, the parents' personality trait is not just, like, bigot, and that's it. There is a bit more to them. Not much, admittedly, but it's not just, like, that cut and dry. But, nevertheless... Uh, again, from, like, the handwriting, the things you find in the, in the house, it tells you a lot about everybody in the family, and, you know, Katie coming back and, like, putting the pieces together is quite interesting, and, yeah, start a new game, and then you can also apply modifiers and commentary, like, turn all the lights, disable the map, which won't, isn't that much of a difference, but, <clears throat> unlock old doors so everything's unlocked right away, disable voice diaries, Yeah, which mainly is just like, okay, you can just explore. Nothing will, no story will be told, it's up to you when you're done. So, it's also kind of interesting how you can just like, you know, walk around and check it out yourself. Enable commentary. I want to check that out real quick. Hold on. Let's turn on lights, unlock all doors. I'm just curious about something. I want to check out the commentary for this game, but, you know, maybe not on camera. I don't need another, you know, another full playthrough that's just commentary tracks. But I'll definitely need more footage. But yeah, Gone Home does a lot of really good storytelling, you know, and again, turning this, like, Hi, seeming horror game into, like, a genuinely, like, sweet little love story that goes a long way into developing its characters. Hi, I'm Steve Gaynor. I'm the co-founder of the Fulbright Company. Uh, we made Gone Home. Uh, I was the writer and uh, designer... Um, and thank you for taking a look at our commentary mode. Uh, whenever you find an icon like the one you just clicked on, um, you can find out a little bit more about the game. Uh, I want to thank everybody who's added commentary. Whoops. The Didn't mean to cut them off. Runs for our game makes me really happy, and the fact that you know speed that runs. The, the the any percent speed run, aka you don't have to pick up anything, just get to the end as fast as possible, has basically been optimized to, I think, 47 or 48 seconds. Even just watching that speed run is really fun because you see the player optimize. Like, for instance, the, the, the fastest speed runs, they don't turn on any lights because it would take a fraction of a second to turn towards the light switch and turn it on and, and then turn back to the direction they wanted to go. Um, and, you know, they just kind of, like, strafe past things and don't even change direction um, to, to, to move through the house. Um, and then, yeah, the 100% diary speedrun is even more interesting because players use that secret knowledge to play the game totally out of order based on 
<laughs> a strategy for, okay, what's the most efficient way to go to these 24 points in the game? Like, spatially. So it's like this visit, it's the salesman, you know. Yeah, I missed a lot of dialogue then. All these different points, you know, and what's the best way to do it? It's cool. Yeah, and so seeing, seeing someone think about the house in a totally different way, in a strategic way, that he is about this, this player created challenge um, that says, <laughs> oh, okay, if I go into the basement first, then back out and into the east wing, then don't even go into the west wing until I, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's really cool to, to see that stuff evolve. Um, and I'm really glad that we didn't make it so, for instance, you had to read the note about the secret door before you could even click on the secret door because it would have shut down so many of those opportunities for people to play in interesting yeah. ways and express their mastery over the Everything's space. set up for a reason the way it is. So yeah, that's actually really cool. You know, them talking about this stuff. I should check this... Com I'm going to check out this commentary track on my own, but still, very interesting. You know, how even a walking sim like this, where all you do is walk, people can still, like, play the game in many different ways, finding ways to, like, optimize strategies. And there is a... This is the console version, so, you know, people were doing this on PC when it first came out, and on the console version, you there's a trophy for beating the game in one minute, which I actually was able to pull off. And all you gotta do is just, like, you know, grab the... Um, grab the key, open the door, go to the passage, get the key, and go to the attic and read the journal, and that's it. But that's still, like, just funny that they th think that you could do that. And, yeah, there's a lot of history to this house, including, like, the background, who previously owned it, and what it meant for him, and, you know, you can find some of his old relics. There's, you know, what the parents are doing now, and what's been going on the time that Katie's been away. There's a lot of things here <laughs> but yeah this will be interesting to like look into the commentary track I definitely appreciate this game way more than I did originally because what happened the first time you know I already knew the twist I knew about Sam and what it was actually about and I go like well I'm just gonna still play it for myself and just give it a shot and so you know I took my time went around to things still terrified because I was always wondering like maybe they left out like the trick that there's actually like something skulking around you know I'm looking and I'm waiting for like, um, uh, what was his name? Uh, you know, the family from Resident Evil 7 to start like trudging through the halls. Um, uh, but, you know, and again, there's very great horror atmosphere and ambience to this house, but it's not scary. It's just here. It's just like a very, very atmospheric, um, you know, world they've made here. And from there, you find all the pieces to develop the story about, you know, the family you left behind and how it kind of fell apart. Not because of you, it's just what happened. Because, you know, Sam and Lonnie just could not, you know, had to learn to just accept themselves to each other and just do what they felt was right to them. <clears throat> You know, breaking their, you know, socially accepted, um, you know, the socially accepted, um, uh, what's the right word? You know, just, like, break the stereotypes and just do what they felt was right to them. And, you know, very interesting. It turned to a very real, very sweet little love story, you know, and eventually, like, what happened when I first played is, like, I knew that, but I carried on anyways, and I was terrified and I swear there was, like, one section, I think it was one of, like, the, one of the rooms where you turn the light on, and when you're on your way back out, the light, like, breaks, and so there's just this loud crack and pop as, like, the light goes out, and it just, like, catches you off guard. That's, like, the only jump scare there is in the game. And, you know, not intentional. Um, you know, this game isn't meant to scare you, but it kind of does, because they craft it very well. And then once you start to figure out the pieces, are just like, oh, this is not a horror game, it's a... <clears throat> you know, a love story, well, then the atmosphere kind of, like, washed away for me, and I'm just kind of like, oh, so nothing too scary, so I can just, like, go around collecting stuff and just, like, figure out the rest of the story, and that was kind of it. So, like, the first hour I spent, you know, going around terrified, the second hour I just, like, okay, let's just find the rest of the stuff and be done with this, you know, and, but really ignoring the, but I ignored the many different nuances and little character moments and, like, little character... I don't want to say arcs for, like, the parents, but 
the progression of what they go through as well, unrelated to, you know, the lives they're living while um, Sam is trying to figure herself out. And, you know, how they intersect, maybe come to a head. Like, maybe some of the strictness came from, you know, the dad being in a bad mood from more manuscript rejections and something <clears throat> and stuff like that. So, that's interesting. So, I definitely appreciate Gone Home a lot more. It's not just a really well-done, like, well-told love story, but it's also, like, a very well-done atmosphere. And, you know, not even just for, like, the characters it's actually about, but for everyone involved, despite their problems, you know? So, yeah. It's just very interesting how well-done this is. So, yeah, this is why Gone Home is, like, considered one of the greats. And, again, it all depends on, like, how you feel just by, like, that slow, methodical, like, piecing the story together as it goes. You know? And it's very short. Again, this is, like, 15 bucks for two hours, maybe for your first playthrough, maybe less. And there's not much in the way of... Well, maybe it depends on what you're doing. If you're speedrunning, I guess there's replayability, but, you know, I'm not, so that's kind of it. But it's just very interesting to see how this, like, this came together. And the idea, again, kind of from Bioshock, um, Minerva's Den, where the same people who gave, like, the best emotional story in Bioshock and how they developed, like, the last couple of minutes of that into a full game. So, you know, it's short, but it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's very compact. It's to the point. And when you piece it together, it's very nice and, you know... Very well done. Very well done. <clears throat> yeah, so Gone Home. Definitely a good one to start with if you're trying to get into walking sims. Um, so this is this one done. I got a couple more to play, but yeah, Gone Home was a good... It was good to come back to this. I definitely appreciate it a lot more than I originally played it. I can now see like why this is considered like one of the best walking sims Like truly now. I get it a lot more um, than I did the first time. So that's nice. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's going. I don't know what's wrong with me today. But, alright. Gone Home. Yeah, a very, one of the seminal walking sims for a reason. Alright, with that all being said. Thank you for watching. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. Don't know. Got something that, like caught in my throat today and I just can't feel very croaky. Okay, anyways. With that all being said. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe and all that. This is Samara, signing off. And thank you for watching me play Gone Home.